everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. We are wearing heavy ass makeup for a heavy metal subject. <laughs> Today, we're gonna talk about the cult of Dionysus. Now, as I proceed with this video, I would suggest that you set your opinions and preconceived notions aside. This is definitely a fascinating subject, but it is one that is very morbid and horrifying as well. The followers of Dionysus, or Bacchus, among his many other names, worshiped Mother Nature to a very perverse extremity physically acting out their very lofty ideations in a gory theater. Those who participated in these mysteries were spiritual conduits for mother nature's violence so that she could graze human flesh by means of human hands. This video is going to act as an introduction on the subject. I'm not gonna go super in depth on anything. And if you guys enjoy it, then I will do deeper dives in the future. With that being said, we can't talk about the cult of Dionysus or the mystery cults without telling you who it is they worship. Dionysus or Bacchus, which is the Roman equivalent, was the god of wine or more accurately, intoxication. He was often dubbed as the liberator. He was also the god of lust, ecstasy, violence, and theater. He was a servant to Thonian nature. That, that sentence right there, that is paramount. Dionysus represents humans at their most cruel and carnal and exploitative. He represents total submission to instinct and the bondage of extremes. His totem was a panther, and he was often depicted as a transvestite that was ornamented in ivy, and he often wielded a pine cone topped scepter, a phallic symbol. And he is also often regarded as the prototype for Christ. Now, I'm gonna stop here really quick because that's a hell of a thing to say, isn't it? Because the way that I'm talking about him definitely seems like he's more like the prototype for Satan, which in the Christian religion, they switched everything around. But ladies and gentlemen, it is generally understood when you do your research into this, that Christianity and its ideologies, its rituals, its ceremonies and its figures were appropriated from the mystery religions. Now there's nothing bad about this. I personally don't think there is. And so I make this point for one reason only. The doctrine of Christianity was intended to cleanse the mystery religions of their transgressions, to take the horrible acts that they committed and repurpose them for good. And if you would like me to elaborate a little bit more on that, perhaps that can be the next video, if you'd like. Now, enough of that, let's just get on with it. Dionysus was the son of Zeus and Semele. He was twice born, this is very important, once through his mother and the second time through his father, Zeus. His mother was vanquished by lightning and then Zeus plucked him out of her singed body and then put him into his thigh, which in mythology, the thigh is the male womb. This birth gives Dionysus the wisdom of life, death, and rebirth. He is said to have passed through both the male and female doors. Now the matrimony between Zeus and Semele is also pertinent to the nature of their very prodigal son, as Semele was human. She represents earth. And since Zeus was a god, his lightning bolt, the fatal one that killed her as he cast it, symbolized the connection between heaven and earth. But it is said that Dionysus always remained loyal to his mother in spirit. It is believed that Dionysian cults themselves originated in Mycenae in 1350 BC. Those who followed Dionysus were either called the Thiasis or the Bacante which I hear the Bacchante a lot more. They consisted of satyrs, maenads, and nymphs. Oftentimes the followers were depicted in a therianthropic form, which is half human and half animal. In art, you see this all the time, especially with satyrs. And this is obviously just a means to continue the metaphor of their animalistic behavior, the instinctual behavior. There were many festivals that were associated with Dionysus. The most famous is probably the Bacchanal, but there was also one that was called the Dionysia, and there were four of them every year. And I'll give you a little quote here. 
of what goes on. The Dionysia, like Saturnalia, was a time when classes came together in order to celebrate their shared origins in the natural world. Class distinctions were, to a degree, temporarily suspended, and opportunities for public satire were made conducive by the wearing of masks and costumes by participants in the celebrations. It is believed that this festivity was the origin of the theatrical tradition for which Greece became so famous. You know, I always thought that was fascinating. When I read this years ago, I thought, it was really, really interesting that those of higher status would trade places with those of lower status. To bring it back, those who worshipped Dionysus worshipped Mother Nature in all of her fervid, animalistic, and indifferent cruelty. Their rituals and ceremonies always referenced chaos and our eventual submission to it. They also referenced Dionysus' own passage through life and death. Dionysian rituals or ceremonies most commonly exemplified this through rituals like dismemberment, cannibalism, orgies, as well as intoxication and theater and dance. So I'm going to talk about those for a minute. Now when it comes to the mystery cults, when it comes to the cult of Dionysus, and if you don't know what I mean by mystery cult, mystery cults just means that uh, they were secretive, that they didn't uh, you had to be an initiate, and if you're an initiate, that was when you were able to know what they did. People who were on the outside didn't know. That's where this whole idea of like secret societies came from, okay? But as far as the cult of Dionysus goes, the most sacred ritual was called Sparagamos. It is the ritual of dismemberment. It is in honor of Dionysus' own dismemberment, you know, after his crazy two births. Usually it is an animal that is used for this ritual, but people were used too. Now in regards to Dionysus' death, so Dionysus was supposed to rule the cosmos one day. Zeus had it intended for him. And since Zeus had become unfaithful with Dionysus' mother against Hera's wishes, Hera had incited the Titans to kill Dionysus. So what they did uh, Dionysus was a baby. They distracted him with toys and a mirror, and then they tore him to pieces. So when we get to the ritual, this kind of act of tearing apart is an act of destruction. It's an act of reduction, a metaphorical kind of dismantling of structure. It's kind of nature's talent. And the tearing apart or scattering of the different limbs and such was also seen as kind of like a scattering of seed, liking it to insemination and also honoring fertility goddesses as well. But I'd like to travel back to this idea of destruction. Destruction is at the heart of all of the mystery cults and can lead into another ritual practice, which is even worse. It is the practice of omaphagy, which is cannibalism. Now, Cannibalism in Dionysian practice represents uh, the embodiment of whoever it is you are consuming. To embody Dionysus by consuming his flesh, for example. But I want to focus it uh, more on it being a certain facet of destruction, which uh, in the form of cannibalism, it is regression. This type of destruction reduces something into nothing. Nothing is a very crucial idea here. To help explain this a little bit better, I'm going to once again reference the conversation between King Midas and Salinas, which is a story from mythology. Salinas was Dionysus' companion, and he told King Midas, after much prodding, that humanity's greatest desire was to be nothing, or second best, to die soon. So to surmise, to make sense of all that, these rituals, these rites, these ceremonies were excessive by design. Excess was a virtue and a core principle of Dionysus' teachings. And excess leads to its natural opposite, which is nothing. It's this kind of act of like consuming oneself, self-destruction. You are nothing at all. You are nowhere. And I actually have this quote in my Instagram bio and I have had it for years. It is the, uh, nowhere is the provocative ambiguity of excess. And here I can also reference again, enantiodromia, everything in its extreme becomes its opposite. Cannibalism or omaphagy is just the act that symbolizes this idea. Self-destruction in all of its forms is exemplified by this very extreme act. But if I continue to talk about 
nothing and everything, my brain is gonna get a little fuzzy, so we're gonna move on. Now, a unifying factor with sporogamos and omophagy is the importance of blood. During these very gruesome rituals, blood was literally used as fertilizer. It was to fertilize the soil for good harvest, and when it came to women, it was splattered onto their thighs to ensure their fertility. Fecundity, virility, violence, murder, it all intermingled, always. Blood sacrifice was destruction as a form of creation. It was sacrificing a life to provide life for another. It was all, you know, very, very cyclical, creation and destruction. The Ouroboros can be interpreted to symbolize this as well. Sacrifice of life, which usually it was a young animal, can be seen, uh, for example, in certain cultures that will slay an animal for a feast. During these, these feasts or ceremonies, certain prayers are said to thank the animal for giving its life in order to nourish those at the table. Blood is also one of the many liquids that are associated with Dionysus. They include milk, honey, sap, water, and of course, wine. You can see the kind of reference towards fertility and femininity and uh, the love goddesses, uh, fertility goddesses. It's all very like nurturing and motherly. You can tell there's an affinity for his mother. Next is... <laughs> Now, this video is already probably not suitable for most advertisers, let alone monetization. Uh, and since we already touched on most of its significance, just know orgies were numerous. For the previous reasons, as well as sex being a means of submission to Thonian impulses. Excess 2 rears its head once more, because orgies usually ended in the aforementioned atrocities. But the thing is, the cult of Dionysus, those who were in it, they understood the exact price of excess, and they welcomed the punishment, usually. But more importantly, sex was a means of achieving ecstasy, or ecstasis. The objective of many of these rituals, as well as the cult in general, was to free yourself from yourself. And on that note, you have two of the less barbaric inclusions on this list, which are drunkenness and theater. To achieve ecstasis, you can literally just assume another role. You change your identity through theater. And through drunkenness, you literally just travel outside of your comfort zone. You lose your inhibitions. You act differently. You either act like not yourself at all or like your true self, like the way you want to act. You act on impulse. You don't let your mind or yourself get in the way. Now, the cult of Dionysus is very fascinating to me because I find its gore and barbarity artistic in a way. It was vastly immoral and indulgent and murderous, but it was honest in a way. Those who participated knew the consequences, um, knew that there was not one without the other. I loved how they turned concepts that they had into actual physical acts into those rituals, into those ceremonies. It almost reminds me of performance art. I mean, how fascinating is it to tear another apart in order to symbolize chaos and an actual dismantling of one another? Joint by joint, bone by bone. They knew that mother nature had trapped them in their fleshy bodies, but also that mother nature was a way to escape from those bodies too. I also find Dionysian concepts very disorienting in themselves. There's so many paradoxes when you start talking about it, writing the script for a video, when re reading about it. Like, freedom and bondage, for example, coincide seamlessly in his teachings. There are boundaries, yet none at all. Disorienting. Very disorienting. And even the fact that I find myself losing the plot just seems like an intended symptom of all of it, too. But that's the end of this video. Let me know what you think about all this, because it's definitely it's an intense video. This is an intense thing to talk about. I'm actually, I was very surprised to see so many people, or I guess a decent amount of people that wanted to hear about this. Anyway, please leave a comment. Please like this video. Please subscribe if you're new, if you liked this video. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.